Some shows don't need a celebrity narrator to introduce the show. But this show does. In a world filled with endless opportunities, why would two men who have built 13 multi-million dollar businesses altruistically invest five hours per day to teach you the best practice business systems and moves that you can use? Because they believe in you. And they have a lot of time on their hands. They started from the bottom, now they're here. It's the Thrive Time Show starring the former U.S. Small Business Administration's Entrepreneur of the Year, Clay Clark, and the entrepreneur trapped inside an optometrist body, Dr. Robert Zuckner. Two men, eight kids, co-created by two different women. 13 multi-million dollar businesses. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. From the bottom and now we're at the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Colton Dixon's on the hooks. I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm alive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's the CNC up on your radio. And now, three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we're here. Ah! From the bullpen, feeling the floor. Whoa. Yes, 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 and yes, Sarah, we are here. Aaron, we are here. We are talking about how to uh, have massive success. That's what we're talking about. And uh, I just want to ask you, Sarah, did you go to high school? I did. I'm not going to go with last names, just first names, okay? <laughs> Did you go to, to high to high school? I did. Did you go to college? I sure did, unfortunately. How long did you go? Uh, I mean, I went to college for two years before I, I decided to drop out. Okay. Now, you've had multiple jobs since college. Mm -hmm. Fire off some of the jobs you've had. Again, I'm not looking for last names. I'm not trying to paint you to corner. <laughs> Just what, what kind of jobs have you had before right now? Um, I managed a Buffalo Wild Wings for two years. Really? Mm -hmm. In Broken Arrow or where? I actually did one in Tulsa. Will you eat there now? I actually will. Okay, yeah. cool. That's good. That's good. Okay, because I like that place. Hey, keep going. Um, and then I also managed an incredible pizza really? in Oklahoma City. Will you eat there? I will not. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and uh, so you uh, uh, you were a manager mm -hmm. at these places. Okay. Uh, Aaron, not looking for last names, just just kind of background. What what have you been doing before now? So, oh, you're, are you muted? I think you're muted somehow. Are you? Is your mic on? Okay, switch mics real quick. Sarah, you're on this mic, and Aaron, so, so you're going to be sitting right here. And then Aaron, you're because if, if you're listening out there, folks, and you're wanting to record a professional podcast when you get older someday, you, you, one thing you want to do is make sure all your guests are on a mic. Okay, so Aaron, uh, so you, uh, what jobs did you have before now? So I bought a salon whenever I was 17. You bought uh, a salon? I did. What kind of salon? Um, we did, well, I focused on hair, but I had nails, lashes, pedicures. Are you nails. serious? Yeah. When you were 17? 17. Wow. wow. I was That's still impressive. Still in high school. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And and then so what else did you do after that? Um, after that, I started managing a waxing place in Owasso. Did you go to college? No. Did you uh you go to high school? Yes. Okay. So um Amazing. If, if anybody goes to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire, I'm gonna pull it up. Thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire. You can download everything we're talking about on today's show. And I just want to ask this question to you, Sarah. Did you have any classes in school ever that, that, that where the teacher said the, the title of this class is to of the course is to teach you how to become rich? No. Okay. Aaron, did you ever have that course? No. So to me, I don't even understand what are they teaching? Like, I don't get, I, I just remember being 15 years old, 14 years old, 16, probably 12, I don't know, some age, thinking, uh, I don't want to be poor anymore. I should probably learn about that. <laughs> and they never talked about it. So I read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Someone's writing these down. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, I read, you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I read all these books. And then I built a successful company and I kept thinking that at some point, somebody, some, at some point would write a book on how to become rich. And there's, there's some great books I've read um, about different aspects of becoming wealthy, but I've never had one book that was like a cohesive, this is specifically what you do to become successful. So if you go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire, you can download this book, which is called A Millionaire's Guide, How to Become Sustainably Rich, a step-by-step -step guide to building a successful Money generating and time freedom creating business. So we're going to go here to page 
number 10 of the book, page number 10. And could you read this this quote here under this incredible cartoon on page 10, please? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Temporary failures are a prerequisite to success by Napoleon Hill. Okay. So if you're listening out there today and you have uh, some adversity en route to achieving success, you have to understand that temporary failure is a prerequisite to success. So correct me if I'm wrong. Just moments ago, did we not just announce we were taking the Reawaken America tour to Las Vegas? And then did we not find out that we might not have every aspect of the details yet confirmed properly? That would be correct. And it happens every time. Mm -hmm. Every time I book any Reawaken America tour event, if you're listening right now and you say, I don't know what the Reawaken America tour is, we run around, uh, we as an Eric Trump, Cash Patel, General Flynn, Mike Lindell, conservatives and libertarians running around sharing the, the, the truth about what's going on with our nation and trying to stop this great reset agenda. But- Every time that we choose a venue, so let's do an example. We go up here to time to free America.com. Here we go. Time to free America.com. Keeping my fingers on the home row. On the home row. <laughs> Don't want to get my carpal tunnel. Want to keep on the home row. I go here. I scan. I look around. Ooh, when's the next one? Oh, I know Miami. I want to go to that one. So we click here and we go Miami, Florida. Let's go. Yes. And this just in, folks. This just in. The date of the event is May 12th and 13th. That is, that is correct. Yes. But I've had to change the time of the start time and the end time multiple times. This just did, folks. So if you look here, it says starting at 830 and going till 830. That's going to be adjusted over time. Right. It's not 100% accurate right now. And that's going to bother somebody. I can tell you this. The doors will open at 6. The first speaker will be approximately 830. But Mickey Willis, who made the pandemic movie, this beautiful man, he calls me up and says, hey, what if we would do a pandemic like part two, like part three uh, release party? So part three, what if we did a release party at your event? I'm going, that'd be cool. But if I were to say yes, which I did say yes, then I have to change the time that the event ends because we're going to chair and transition into almost like a movie theater kind of thing. Oh. And I just talked to talk to a Jim Brewer, the comedian. And do, do you know who Jim Brewer is? Yes. Do you know who Jim Brewer is? Yes. So Jim reaches out and he's like, hey, I want to be a part of it. I'm going, yeah, let's do it, man. So now if he's there and he's going to speak, I should probably add him to the flyer. But I didn't yet. Because, Sarah, the quote from Napoleon Hill is, Temporary failures are a prerequisite to success. But most people quit the moment there's any adversity at all, ever. That's right. Have you seen this? Mm -hmm. People are like, ah, and I, I see people all the time. It's at least once a day, somebody goes to timetofreeamerica.com to request a ticket. And you talk to them, we have most, I'd say 99% of the people who request tickets are great. Right. But do we not get one person who's like, your flyer says it starts 8.30 and it's really 9. Yes. Does that happen? <laughs> Every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's because people as a general rule that the, the entrepreneurship rhythm that everyone needs to write down, and I will take notes here and I'll put it on today's show notes. Okay. So let me pull up the show notes. And everybody, if you're, if you're at home and you go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire, you can download the actual uh, notes that correspond with today's show. But I also am taking notes here so that you can kind of follow along that way. There's a four-step rhythm to entrepreneurship that everybody out there has to understand. Okay. So the four-step rhythm. So one is you define what you think is going to happen. Then you act, then you measure, then you refine. So that, that's the method that that's the method uh, or the rhythm of entrepreneurship. And so Sarah, I'm going to little pop quiz. Okay. Why do we have to define what we think is going to work? Well, you got to think two steps ahead, maybe even more steps, because you never know what's going to happen. So we define what we – wait, Aaron, why can't we know for sure what's going to happen? Why? I mean, why can't I wait to sell tickets until every single detail is 100% perfect? Because it'll never be ready, or you – you just want to make sure that you get it out there. Right. Napoleon Hill, you once said, Napoleon Hill, I, na I, named, I named my son after this guy, Napoleon Hill, <laughs> Napo Leon Hill. Okay. He says, the time will never be just right. You must act now. Okay. This just in, life is not a dress rehearsal. So I talked to uh, Alex Jones, his, his folks, and they're going, hey, you should take the Reawaken America Tour to Vegas. Let's do it. I'm going, yeah, we should do it. Let's do it. Yes. So we decided to go ahead. I reached out to Eric Trump, General Flynn. We agreed. We said, let's do this event in Vegas. Yes. The word amen, by the way, means yes. That's what it means. Yes. That's why I say yes, 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 and yes. 
Yes, we're in the air everywhere at the Rap Time Show. Okay, so we said yes. Okay, I made the flyer. I like the flyer. I worked with D on the flyer. Feel good about it. We announced the date. We announced the time. But we know we're going to have to make changes along the way. And have you ever discovered that most people who are not doing anything love to provide the most negative feedback? Have you discovered this? Yes. Yes. So I feel like we need to just make sure everybody grasps the profundity of this idea. Sarah, read the quote again, please. Yeah. Temporary failures are a prerequisite to success. Yeah. So if you do go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire and you you go there and I'm going to go to Dropbox instead because I wrote the book and therefore I can do that. And you, if you're listening right now, you cannot do that. (laughs) I can do that because I wrote the book. And if you too write a book, you can go and download the copy of the book and not have to go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire. But we go here and we, there's the cover of the book. And we go here to the typeset version of the book. And we're scrolling down here to page, what page are we on there, sir? That was 10. We're on page 10. Okay. So we look at the book here. We're on page 10. I'm going to change this book over time. I don't know if that a lot of people know that when I write books, I often will change the book over time. And Sarah, why do I change the book that I just wrote maybe several times before it's finally done? Well, you want to make sure it's all set in stone, that you love it the way that it is. And I'm going to improve it. I'm going to like, man, this this picture needs to be bigger. This graphic needs to be bigger. I want to, you know, but I'm going to. So this is my Ford Escort. There it is. <laughs> Missed that car. <laughs> I wrote a song about it. I'm going to put it on today's show. It's kind of dirty because I wrote it when I was in college, but it's funny. <laughs> I'm going to put it on today's show. It's called the Ford Escort. I wrote this song I did. Um, So it's pretty. If you listen to the show today, folks, and you hear the song, the Ford Escort song, just don't. I wrote it when I was like 17 and I'm not 42. So (laughs) I still think it's funny now, but I probably shouldn't write songs like that now. But I did write it and I'm not going to apologize for doing it then that's the thing but i wrote a song about it but this song i i hand painted it and why do you think sarah i hand painted this song as my number one marketing system well because you liked it and it worked for you aaron what do you think if why would i why would i instead of auto wrapping my vehicle why did i paint it it's less expensive and you're in college right and I'm trying to get the attention of my ideal and likely buyer and in my infinite wisdom i didn't know exactly how i wanted the car to look so i just began painting and people said to me, they would see my car and go, oh, no, because they would see the car and they would say, you clearly were painting while doing something else. Or I don't know if I have a picture of it, but I, I painted it with the idea in mind of getting the attention of my ideal and likely buyer, not exactly knowing how it would turn out. There it is. Wow. <laughs> but in college, everybody knew about the vehicle. They had no idea what I did for a living. They didn't know I was a DJ, but they would see it. And they're like, Kung Pao, look at your vehicle. What do you do? And I'm like, I'm a DJ. And they go, okay. So that's how I marketed my business was that and flyers and these sorts of things. But again, we go back to the rhythm of entrepreneurship. Step one, we have to define. Step two, we have to act. Act. Step three, we have to Measure. Measure. And so we're doing the Reawaken America Tour. This is our 18th event so far? Uh, I think, yeah, this is the 18th. 18th. And then, the 18th. and then Doral will be 19th. 19th. And then uh, Vegas will be... The big 2-0. Right. And the thing is, um, we allow people to name their price to attend these events. I do that because I grew up poor and I, I wouldn't want anyone to be able to not be able to afford to go. And that's why I, that's how I do my business workshops too. I do the business workshops like that, where you can afford to, you, I tell people, I would prefer if you'd pay $250, but you can pay whatever price you want to pay. And I do that because I don't want anyone to be able to, to not be able to afford to go. But over time I've discovered patterns. You've, 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 t- you've talked to thousands of ticket buyers in this, yeah. point, right? Mm-hmm. So the patterns are this. What are the most commonly asked questions that people ask about the Reawaken America Tour when they go to ThriveTimeShow.com, Aaron? What, what, what do they ask you most often? Uh, most, what are what are the ticket prices is the yep. first question I get. There it is. Um, oh, man. Well, I think a lot of people ask me, who's speaking? Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you have an itinerary? Yeah. Yep. It's so like right now, just now today, I just now today have the finalized itinerary for Nashville. I just now have it done now. Um, and Haley is going to look at it and proof it right now. And then I'm going to have Andrew proof it because I have to work through a lot of the details of it. 
Because mm-hmm. I the four steps are define, act, act, measure, refine, right? So I know now that on Thursday the 19th, we're going to go to the p- very patriotic Providence party and meet up. Aaron, are you going? Yeah. Okay. Sarah, are you staying here? I'm staying here. Okay. So Aaron will be there at the very patriotic, the very patriotic, patri- I see, I need to fix it. Very patriotic Providence party. Providence is the name of the town. And then patriot is the w- who we are. And party is what we're going to do. So if you take three P's in a row, that's an alliteration. And I like that. So it's a <laughs> it's a very patriotic Providence party uh, and meetup. You know, but if I change it to be a potentially, a very <laughs> potentially, a very potentially patriotic party and meetup, that is potentially funnier. <laughs> Right. So you you change it though because you're you're it's like I look at it, but I, I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna wait to announce that we're do what we're I'm not gonna get it perfect before we do it. I'm just gonna announce it. And someone says, well, What are you gonna do? I mean, have you even called Jonathan's grill? No, <laughs> I have not called Jonathan's grill. And you know what, Jonathan, if you're listening, I'm not gonna call you first. We're just gonna show up and we're gonna show up, and there's probably gonna be like 500 patriots that are gonna show up at this. And you're not going to be ready for us. And I don't care. You know why? I'm going to define what I think is going to work. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to define, act, measure, refine. And you know what we did? We, I announced we were doing a meetup at an ice cream shop when we were in Batavia. Mm-hmm. And there was like 500 people. Were you guys at that? I wasn't at that were when you? I heard about it. I wasn't at Everybody that. Everybody went there. It was awesome. And the ice cream shop's like, what's going on? What's happening? I'm like, you guys are getting rich right now. And they're like, oh. How come someone didn't tell us we could have staffed up? And I'm like, because we define, we act, <laughs> we measure, we refine. This is the thing. Okay. So I just, I got to talk to Melody today. She's on my list. Um, so Melody is going to do praise and worship starting at 745. But I want her to keep playing throughout the day, like as people speak, because it's kind of funny when the band is playing, when you say something, it's do shh. I think that's funny. Um, Then I got an intro video I'm going to play. It's seven minutes and nine seconds long. Then we've got another intro video. Then we have the opening prayer from Amanda Grace. Uh, Then we have um, Aya Kelly sings the national anthem. Then Melody comes up, does more praise and worship. Then Greg Locke just unloads. It's going to be just a blasty bust. But if you look at it, if you really look at it right here and you go, is that the right move? Because we just had praise and worship. See, look at this right here. We had praise and worship from 745 to 830. You almost kind of go, you know, maybe we need like, what if we were to change it right here on the show? So we change it. So we go, what if we did that? And it's like, oh, here we go. So let's do this. We'll, this is folks, this is how you do it. So we're going to have General Flynn. He's going to do the Pledge of Allegiance because he and I talked about that. And he loves to do that. So General Flynn teaches the pledge okay lead, general friend leads <laughs> leads us in the pledge pledge of allegiance allegiance okay awesome and then we need his bio so where we where can we find his bio we're going to search and someone says you're doing this on a show this is the most boring show ever if there was <laughs> if you would do it ahead of time then we wouldn't have this awkward tension where you're running around looking for his bio but you know what I like this awkward tension, and to me, it brings me joy. So I'm going to find it, find his bio on the show. And again, a lot of people, they wouldn't, Sarah, they wouldn't do this. Why would most people not do the show until they had the bio for General Flynn before making the live change on the show? Well, because they don't feel like they have the time to refine it. They Keep just going. get it done. Keep going, Aaron. It's deeper. <laughs> it's darker. It's more terrible. Why would most people not do that? Keep going. Uh, it's right there. I know. Most people fear what? Change. Other people. The um, rejection. It bothers yeah, them. Rejection. Somebody's going to watch this show right now and leave me a rumble comment and say, this is the worst show ever. It's terrible. <laughs> Someone else is going to say, you know, my sister has a show and it's better because the host takes it more seriously. And I, I went to business college and just because you have found a way to make millions of dollars and teach other people how to make millions of dollars and you do it over and over and over, doesn't mean that you're an expert. Do you have a PhD? <laughs> no. So I don't care what anybody thinks about God. There's an audience of one. Hopefully he's, cheers. If he doesn't, then I got I screwed it up. Okay. So. <laughs> General Flynn leads the plays. We just changed it. 
So we just did it. There it is. We made the change. We're good. Now, Melody leads praise and worship at 910. Pastor Greg Locke is going to preach and teach the Word of God from 925 to 950. David and Stacy are going to be coming up, telling us about the meet and greet event uh, on uh, uh, Friday night at 9.50. They come up. 10 o'clock, Simone, go! Smile! Smile! <laughs> Jim out! Every time I hear Simone, I think of Jim, Jim out! You know, from Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Probably deep state in some capacity. <laughs> Ow! Smile! Okay, so Simone's going to come up there from 10 to 10.30. Do you know who Simone Gold is? Oh, yeah. Do you know who she is? Yes. Okay, she's great. Then at 10.30, Trisha Lindsay, she's a, just a firecracker of a speaker. She's going to come up there and speak. Dr. Tenpenny's in the house. In the host, 1045 to 1115. Uh, Amanda Grace gets up there, 1115. Charlie Ward's 1130. Uh, look at that. Dr. Vikovitz, 1145. Uh, then we have uh, Gene Ho. Look at Gene Ho. He's going to go from 12 to 1215. Then you got from 1215 to 1230. Okay, you got the uh wait, we need the bio, by the way. We need to get their bio, Sarah. Got it. That's my fault right there. See that this is what you now again, you define, then you act, act, then you measure. Right. And you refine. This is what you do. If I waited to, to tell people about this, if I waited to get this perfect before doing the show, we would never have a show. Right. So people, some people say this is terrible. I want a show that's more produced before I listen to it. Fine, you can do that. But meanwhile, we, hundreds of thousands of listeners, will continue enjoying this show that you don't like if you don't like it. And that's okay. Okay. Now, the next is the, the, the market's always right, by the way. So if the market rejects me, then, I'm, then, I don't, then I don't win, I'm wrong. But if the market says yes, then I win. And currently I'm winning a lot all the time. Okay, so we continue. So Cynthia Hughes, she's speaking at uh, 1230. Okay. 1245 is Brian Gibson. One o'clock is Seth Holhouse. 115 is Brandon House. House, um, Stella Emanuel is at 11, is a one thirty. Roger Stone, well, 11, 145. 2 o'clock, uh, Dr. Rashid, 215, Thomas Renz, 230, Cash Patel. Two, oof, he goes till 3. 3 o'clock to 315 is? Pamela Christian. And you know what? We don't know what she's talking about. So we're going to have to put here topic, topic. So we're going to put here topic. And we just, you'll have to call her today to get the topic. Okay, okay? I'll topic, do that. Because we... Don't have a topic. How awkward, right? <laughs> and then 3.15, Anna Kate gets up there. 3.30, Jim Brewer, who I just talked to. We'll do a comedy routine at 4 o'clock. Trump's right-hand man, Peter Navarro. 4.30, General Flynn. 5 o'clock, Eric Trump's in the house. 5.30, Katie Hopkins. Uh, Katie Hopkins, she is hilarious. She's hilarious. <laughs> and she, I, I'm going to give her the topic right now, the title. Okay. Because it's like lampooning. The jackassery of the COVID COVIDians of, of the COVIDians and the godless globalists. And so it says you can't give her the title of her talk. Oh, I can't because I know what she'll do. She's gonna get up there and lampoon the jackassery of the COVIDians <laughs> and the godless globalists. Have you seen her talk? I I vaguely did one time. She's hilarious, <laughs> but I don't know what she's gonna do. Did you see it? Did you see what you see her talk? I haven't. She's on stage, and then she, all of a sudden she says, Clay, have you seen my new tattoo? But she's from the UK. She's like, <laughs> Clay, have you seen my new tattoo? And I go, uh, no. And then she tries to show it to me. And I'm like, no, stop. <laughs> Unbelievable. That lady just, but she came all the way up across the pond to be at the show. So we let her do what she wants to do, but uh, close your eyes and That's pray awesome. for her. And then James uh, Mundy, uh, the host of the Liberty Monks, he's going to be there. We've got uh, Patrick Bird, feeling the burn, big red. Okay. <laughs> He'll be there. Uh, Tracy Slepsevic. Uh, I spent hours practicing Slepsevic. Straight Tracy Slepsevic is just so great. Uh, I just, it's, uh, you know, you, 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 there's certain names if you're emceeing, you don't want to mispronounce them, but maybe think about that. Define, act, measure, refine. I was a DJ back in the day. I used to DJ a lot of events. And you know what? About a fifth of them were Hispanic events. Oh, man. Or from other countries or other cultures. Turns out I'm white. So I would <laughs> read uh, sometimes the names for the wedding party and I didn't know how to pronounce them. So okay. I would go up to the couple and say, hey, could you help me? And I would write out how to pronounce them. But every once in a while, I would uh, not know. So I'd say, ladies, you know, next we got the bride and the groom here. And our first uh, groomsman here is Rodrigo Smith, you know, or whatever. And then the, 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 the next name is Julio Gonzalez. And I got the names going pretty good. Then the third one, I have no idea how to say it. I'm like, <laughs> and our third name, I'm just going to spell it because I don't know how to say it. It's, uh, you know, and I would just do it. <laughs> But again, I would watch other MCs crumble and not say anything because they were worried about rejection. So the the pattern is you define, then you 
act, then you measure, then you refine. There it is. Okay. So you have to track your results, folks. So you got to track. Okay. And so far I have a good track record of organizing events before building the reawaken America tour back in the day. I used to have a company called DJ connection.com and I paid my way through college with this company and I would do events called episodes where I would charge people money to attend uh, my dance parties. And I'll put footage of the episode at the end of this video, along with my inappropriate Ford Escort song, so that everyone can hear that that song is a real thing and that the episodes really happened. But that's how I paid my way through college. And I and you, that's how I did it, you know? So again, we have to, though, to define what we think is going to work. We act, we measure, we refine. Then we have Bo Polney at 6.30. 6.45, we have the Cheesecake Lady. Cheesecake Lady, <laughs> hoping people gain weight all over the world. <laughs> okay, she's cheesecake lady. She'll be uh, speaking. Then Dr. Ben Marble, um, he started, uh, uh, you know, he started um, myfreedoctor.com, which provides uh, treatment, affordable treatments for COVID people. Um, and he's a great guy. Then you have Hannah Faulkner will be speaking. Um, and uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, we have got Laura Logan in the house. Okay, and I need to put here title. Because I don't have a title for the talk, and you have to have a title for every talk. And Sarah, the only way to know if you have a title for the talk is to what? Call them. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> call people. And a lot of people feel rejection, don't they? Yeah. There are a lot of people they don't want to call people because of the rejection. What if I call them too much? What if I don't call them enough? Have you had? Do you, do you see this? Yeah, I get it all the time. What if I call her too much? What if I don't call her enough? What if I call her the wrong time? These are all things I don't ponder ever. Yeah. You know, so again, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, it's like a heavy contact, heavy rejection, full contact sport. We need to call Hannah, by the way, and get her title. Okay. Okay. These I'll are all okay. Um, you do not need to call Laura. I'll call Laura though. Got it. Cool. Um, and then you look here and, it, and we go on today too, Saturday, Saturday. So Saturday, uh, we, we praise and worship music. It looks like it's not on here. So we need to have it right down praise and worship music. When is it? When is it, Brostradamus? When is it going to be, buddy? <laughs> Listen, folks, we got 70 plus confirmed speakers. We're working through it. But again, this is a great show because we're, we're seeing how it happens. We define, we act, we measure, we refine. Where are we going to go eat, Aaron, when we go there? Where are we going on Thursday? Oh, I already forgot the restaurant's name. Jonathan's that, Grill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan's Grill. And, you know, and this is, again, the way we learn stuff is through repetition. So you have to just, you got to stop listening to people that are wrong, which is most people, most of the time when it comes to entrepreneurship, they don't know what they're talking about. If you go to college, they're going to teach you to make a SWOT analysis. Have you seen this? <laughs> I've I've heard it, yeah. <laughs> what you want to do is make a SWOT analysis of your strengths, your weaknesses, and your opportunities and your threats. And so we have a syllabus. And this semester, we're going to be going over the syllabus to discuss the SWOT analysis of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. But before we do that, we want to talk to you about cultural sensitivity. Because many people think that because, you know, that I talk this way, that I might be on a certain team, but it doesn't mean that I'm on a certain team, okay? <laughs> and many people think that because some of you are like going, what team do you think I'm on? Well, the, the idea is because you even thought that you thought something ahead of me saying it, that cop proves you're all racist. And we're going to talk about that this semester. That's what college is like now. Have you seen this? Yeah, actually, yeah. It's crazy. They don't talk about how to grow a business because they talk about how to make you double-minded and dumb. So if you're out there and you want to have success growing a business, that's what I teach. You got to have clarity of thought, define, act, measure, refine. Okay. So day two, 8.30, 8.30, uh, we were going to kick off. You'll probably have praise and worship before that. What time, Sarah, what time was praise and worship day one? I think it was at eight, seven, 745. Seven, See, and the thing is, you didn't get the answer wrong. No. See, I asked you a question that you didn't, you, there's no way you wouldn't have known that. Right. But again, most people wouldn't even guess. They would go, I don't know. People are going to make fun of me. That's what they would do. <laughs> but you know what? You you can't be like that. You did. Have you seen this? Am I the only one who sees this? No, you're not the only one. The other guy, the other day we had a guy interview for the job and he's like, if I work here, do I have to hop on your shows? <laughs> like, you don't have to i would think that you'd want to that's how you become a better broadcaster better communicator is probably by seeing it done or participating now if you don't want to like, i just don't prefer people well that's not going to go well you know i mean unless you're a luciferian godless globalist that's what like zuckerberg is an odd duck but okay we continue so <laughs> 8 30 to uh um so we've got then we got a video presentation 
Dave Scarlett is going to come up there. Opening prayer. Tanya Joy Gibson singing the national anthem. We got to get the bio for Vandersteel, Jackson, Lee. I'll get those. You don't have, you can pull those off other agendas. Okay. Okay. Got it. Then we've got uh, Sean Foyt's doing praise and worship from 10 to 1030. Then we got Robert Ag at 1030. Uh, Dr. Jason Dean at 1045. Ian Smith at 11, Dr. Sherwood at 1115, Christian Northrup at 1130, John Chambers at 1145, at 12 o'clock, Jim Meehan, 1215, Dr. Artist, 1230, Julie Green, hey, Woo. one o'clock, uh, Pastor Dave Scarlett, prayer, a prayer and healing service, uh, 130, uh, Doug Billings, 145, Scott McKay, 2 o'clock, Vidar Ligard, 215, Roger Stone, again, uh, 230, Todd Coconato. 2.45, Marty Grisham. 3 o'clock, Pastor Leon Benjamin. 3.15, Thomas Breedlove. Now, what if somebody can't make the event, Sarah? What do we do? Because we define, act, measure, refine. But what if so, what if the speaker can't make the event? What do you do? Well, we can always refine it, or we can keep it the way it is and move forward. And what can we do if someone doesn't show up? The speaker doesn't show up. What happens? What do we do? Just improvise? Move the schedule? <laughs> All of that. But most people can't handle it because they emotionalize everything okay next teaching moment okay the word emotion okay emotion okay so get the e out of the way okay and take and start you know motion towards your goals you got to get the e out of the way you know people are like oh well, if it doesn't work Billy, <laughs> if it doesn't work Billy, then just move on what if I go bankrupt and stop becoming bankrupt? Try again. Yeah. You know, it's just there's a lot of that. Is there not? Yeah, I hear it every day. Have you seen that hill I'm building out there? Have you seen the hill? Mm -hmm. I don't like that we can see the electrical utility. Have you seen the electrical box? Yes. yes. I don't like it. It's yeah. not natural, pal. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. So I'm like, we got to make that thing go away. I hate that thing. Every day, every day I drive by and I'm like, get it out of here. You know, so we're yeah. going to cover it up and I'm building up, I'm adding on to the goat village. Did you hear about this? I heard about it. Yeah. I'm giving them rocks and all sorts of play things right now out there. It's so fun. So I got the goats. I love the goats. I didn't know if I'd get, I didn't know if I'd like them. I also got a donkey. You remember the donkey? Yeah. I remember that lasted him. like a day. <laughs> it was two days. Yeah. And then the neighbors have a donkey. <laughs> but you take action and then you measure if it works or not, but you have to act. So you define what you think is going to work. Then you act. Then you measure, refine. It turns out the goats and I, we get along. We're good, we're good buddies. And the goats, they know I'm not trying to eat them. I like them. They know that they're not, they're not trying to eat. I know they're not trying to eat me. They're not trying to eat me, and I'm not trying to eat them. So we got a good thing going. Mm -hmm. And now I, I built the. I got some wood, and I built kind of a goat playground. It looks cool. But now yeah. I'm going to add more stones. Do you ever see them jamming out out there? All the time. They love it. This, they're going to be like <laughs> they're going to love it. I'm going to try to build it. I said I want the the goat hill to be taller than I am. Oh, that's I want amazing. the goats up there. Like, we're drunk. <laughs> you know, they can come down and drop kick me. We're drunk. <laughs> you know, it's going to be awesome. So again, you have to define, act, measure, refine. But we continue. This is so important because if you if you if you get emotional, you lose. The moment you you know, I have to fire people all the time. Every Monday, every every Monday, every every Monday, I it's every Monday someone has to be fired. I don't want to fire them. It's like. You know, but it's like, have you seen these these uh, protesters that hop in front of cars? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they're like, stop climate change. So stop your car. <laughs> what? <laughs> so you have to either run them over, which is illegal, move them out of the way. There's it's like so there's people that will come to work. They have the courage to quit, but they still show up. It's crazy. So they're like, yeah. I didn't write any SEO articles and I didn't sell any tickets. Right. Well, you gonna, are you going to sell tickets? No, my phone's broken. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, so were you going to tell anybody that your phone doesn't work? No, because it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> okay, so do you want to get fired? No, I love this job. Have you seen this kind of behavior? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm sure you never saw this at Incredible Pizza. I'm sure you never saw it. I don't know. And if you <laughs> keep people like that in your life, you lose. You can't do it. Okay, so we move on. So then we have 3.15, we got Thomas Breedlove of Brave Books. 3.30, Liz Crokin. Uh, 4 o'clock, Pastor Mark Burns. 4.15, Mike Lindell. 4.15, 4.45, uh, Peter McCullough. And at 5.15, Mel K. Hey! 5.45, Marnie Lynn. I think Marnie's on here twice. Do you think Marnie's on here twice? Um, 
I think either I think she's on there once. I didn't there once. See, but I, we do have a Miriam, and I got them confused. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So, and then we got Cordy Williams at six. Okay, and then Jeff Richfield at six. Uh, can't have two people at six. You see, that <laughs> makes it awkward. So you do what this is called change. Have you heard this concept? You define what you think is going to work, then you act, and then you measure, and then you refine. Yes, over and over and over and over until the goats are happy. <laughs> okay you this is what you have to do i think a lot of times we complicate this stuff we try to think oh i have to do it perfect no you don't you just have to start in the enemy of done is perfect right you know so in my hands here i have a book people say well why don't you you know with your books why don't you get all the airs out of them before you release them because i'd rather just get it out you know so if you want to download a page of my new book that's not great go to page 18 <laughs> <laughs> There's part of it that's missing. So you just go there. You just go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire. Go to page eight and go, uh-oh, <laughs> that's dumb. Whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's done. People criticize. They say, your book says on page 14 of your third book. There's an error in it. Okay. I went to I went to read your book, but you don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my daughter the other day was at a bookstore, and she found one of my books in the used bookstore. She's like, Dad, it's awesome. It's awesome. Look at it. And I'm going, oh, yeah. I sold very <laughs> few copies of that one. There's other books I've sold a lot of copies of, but you have to start, right? You got to yeah. start. You have to get it going, man. Okay, so we're adjusting the times. We got Jane Ruby at 645, Dr. Janice Schmidt at 7 o'clock. Uh, then you got uh, Mary Flynn at 715, 730. You got Sheila Holm. Here we go. Sheila Holm. Every time, have you have you have you heard it? Sheila Holmes talk? Have you heard her talk? Yeah, I have. Have you, Aaron? <laughs> yes. I've been talking to her all day. <laughs> you won't be doing Easter if you if you. I mean, she'll start talking about Easter eggs, and the next thing you know, you're like, I don't want to do Easter. And then, no, she's like, No, let me let me tell you about the origins of CNN. You're like, I don't know, I don't want to. And then she'll talk, start talking, she'll start talking to you about why did uh, Ted Turner, the founder of CNN, have a satanic mentor, and you're Alice Bailey, and you're like, I, I didn't know who Alice Bailey was. <laughs> barely know who ted turner is oh no and it's like why is there the georgia guidestones huh and you're going i don't i didn't know they were a thing yeah and and you just learn so much and at the end of it you'll just want to hunker down in your bed and pray for forgiveness until jesus returns that's what's gonna happen <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you there's so much just woo. jason burmas gotta write down his by the way this guy exposing the transhumanism agenda Okay, of NASA, Elon Musk, and the godless globalists. And someone says, <laughs> "How can you possibly just give people speaker uh, speech titles very easily?" I just type it. <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> so we continue so from eight o'clock to eight fifteen. Okay, that's where we're gonna. And again, this is how I run businesses too. You know. Um, I have, uh, uh, I'm doing a lot of real estate kind of things right now. And they always end up going, well, you just have to buy low. Aaron, you flipped the house, haven't you? Yes. You buy the house in a nice neighborhood. Right. That's beat up. Am I right? Exactly. And then you fix it up and you learn something every time, don't you? Every time. Yeah. Have I told you about the parsonage I bought years ago? No. Braxton's probably listening and Braxton's probably going to say what you said at no point was accurate. So I'm going to speak in generality. So it's very accurate because I don't remember the details because he was the one who did more of the buying of this home. But a uh, there's a uh, there's a uh, orthodontist in Tulsa that I've worked with for years called Kirkpatrick and Lie. Great business. Uh, please don't let my endorsement of his business hurt his business. I know that if I endorse businesses, some people never go there because of that, and I get it. I feel that. I just feel that I can handle that rejection. <laughs> but if you go here to Kirkpatrick and Lie across the street from him, there is a church, Sarah. Have you ever been to a church? Yes. Typically next to a church, there is a home for the pastor. Have you ever heard of this concept? Yes. And that is called uh, for 5,000 mega points. People don't say the word very often. I was always told it was a church home. Church home? Uh, Aaron, yeah. what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, we just called it where the pastor stayed. Okay. Parsonage is the is the word that they're going to use okay. in the That's biz. That's a new one. <laughs> in the, if you're in the biz, you would know. Should you devout, devote your life to ministry? You would have known that, but since you didn't know that, <laughs> you need to take a, what can I say? You need to take a course on it. 
Hey, you know, some people don't want to talk about a subject if they don't know all the words. Yeah. Like, I can't even talk about parsonages because I'm interested. <laughs> and it's like people are like oh, worried about their emotional state of even having a conversation that's outside of their realm. Have you discovered this? Yeah. It's wild, you know? Um, so you go here. This is the bill. This is the, the church right here. And my kids get their teeth, you know, they they basically we pour money into the coffers of Kirkpatrick and Lie here over here at the dentist, the orthodontist. And over here, this is the, the church. So you over here, you pray for more financial benefits and more rewards and more financial success. <laughs> so you can go across the street and hand it all over to the orthodontist. That's the process. You pray for the money, you give it all to the orthodontist, you pray for it, you give it to that's the strategy. Okay. Someone says, Wow, that's so deep. That's what you do. So then you you go across here, and this is the, the I bought this house. And, and and Aaron, how did I know that this house was for sale? What do you what do you think the pro tips? Well, how do you think I knew that this house might be available to purchase yet it did not have a for sale sign on back in the day, 10 years ago or more? How did I know? What were the clues that I thought it might be available to purchase yet it wasn't for sale? Uh did you drive by it and people were moving out of it? Keep going. Sarah, what do you come on? Come on, Sarah. I mean, it was built. Come I on. mean, it's there. How 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 do you <laughs> what are the first things people quit doing if they're not maintaining it? They and, stopped taking care of it. And, yeah. So it's like the grass was crazy. Like a spider monkeys rolling around. <laughs> <laughs> like a hippopotamus. Ugh. There's all these. It's like a, like a safari scene. There's a giraffe. And I'm just kidding. But it was it was pretty rough. I mean, there there was a anaconda in the front lawn. No, there wasn't. But it was like <laughs> it was you could tell it, it was like Amazonian, you know? Wow. It was. How would you? It's just, it was very wild in the front lawn yard. And the back yard was wild, too. Right. So I go in and I'm looking around and I'm going, I bet you we could buy this thing. Now, I don't want to exaggerate. Braxton, you're listening. You're going to you're gonna <laughs> tell me I got the number wrong. I know. But I bought it for about half of what we sold it for. Okay. So I bought it like crazy cheap. Reached out. I said, who owns this? You do public records. You look it up. You find out who owns it. We found out the church owns it. And so what we did is we went in that house and we added this decorative fence you know, around it. And we added, we updated this carport. We added this backyard fire pit thing. And then we went inside and we really got after making the inside of the house beautiful. So it got a little crazy because I was like, just knock out walls, just, just knock them out. Cause you know, they had that small little kitchen where you're like, we're in the kitchen. Terrible. We're all in the kitchen. Cause it's so small. How are you guys? Like it'd be an elevator kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we knocked it out, opened it up. So you could see into the living room, not, you know, knocked it out. So it was a big living room, big kitchen, Put in all stainless steel stuff, you know, did a lot of the shiplap, subway tile stuff, backsplash. Boom. Sold it double. Nice. How did I know that I, Aaron, how did I know? What kind of guarantee that I had that I could sell it for double of what I paid for it? Uh, well, you can look at other houses in the neighborhood. Yes. Mm -hmm. Comps. Yeah. But it all goes back to the same process, which is define what you think is going to work. And then you act. act, then you measure the results. And you were fine. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the reason why I don't flip a lot of houses now, because I find I'd rather build something or buy something and then just do like vacation rentals and keep doing it that way. Nice. Um, but I, I, the idea of flipping the house was just so labor intensive for me to show up every day and to find out that the contractors were not there. And I would call them and I would say, boop, 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 boop. "Hey, are you guys uh, working today? I'd just like to know the status. When are we going to finish the carport?" And they would say, "Well, I tell you what, we're on the job site right now. We're 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 almost done with the carport. I mean, we are just we are getting her done, boss, boss." And I'm like, "Are you high?" <laughs> yes. Are you even at the house? No, I'm actually in San Francisco right now. That actually happened. Oh, my you're gosh. in San Francisco. Well, yes, we're lobster fishing here, and uh, you're lobster fishing. Well, yeah, now, what'd you do with the draw we gave you? Well, uh, we'll need to talk about that when we return. Uh, today's good, going to be good lobster hunting, and I'm <laughs> looking to get... Now, this really happened. Oh, my gosh. Have, and have you ever dealt with contractors? Uh, I try to do most of the work myself, but yes, I have. So I've just felt, I just, for me, it was very profitable, but it was like I could be more profitable doing vacation rentals and then running businesses and that I do, you know, that kind of thing. So if you're listening today... And you say, uh, Capstone, what do I do with all this information? Uh, one, you're going to love the Ford Escort song, which I'm going to add on to today's show. And if you don't <laughs> like it, that's fine. 
And if you have discernment, you'll probably be slightly offended, but I wrote it when I was like 17 years old. So deal with it. Okay. And if you click on the conferences button, we've got just under 25 tickets remaining for the Reawaken America tour, which is going to be in uh, 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 25 tickets left for Nashville. Mm -hmm. So this show will come out. I'm not sure when the show comes out, but if you want to go to Nashville, January 20th and 21st, you get those tickets at time to freeamerica.com. If you want to join us for the business conference, that's going to be, I do them every two months. If you're watching this 10 years from now, just know, unless I'm dead, I'll be doing another business conference every two months. And you can go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. It's a two-day interactive workshop. We start at 7 a.m. We go until 3 p.m. We break every 40 minutes for a question and answer session. We teach you marketing, branding, sales, online ads, real estate investing, legal accounting, how to launch ads, how to hire people, how to fire people, everything you need to know. It's not professional. It's professional <laughs> where you're going to go and be around people that actually know what they're talking about. And we're going to teach you all the systems. It's at my office where we're recording right now. And uh, basically I and Dr. Zellner, we teach you everything we, we know on how to grow a successful company. And so uh, somebody says, well, what makes you qualified to teach us? Well, between Dr. Zellner and I, uh, there's the largest auto auction in Oklahoma. That's his business, uh, Z66AA. Then there's the largest uh, dog training uh, business that I'm a minority owner of. So there's Z66AA. That's the auto auction uh, there. Then you have the uh, dog training business, and then you have a, a haircut chain, and then you you have a, um, and then you have uh, the Dr. Zellner. It's optometry clinic, and these are you know these are businesses that we. Our own that we own or we're involved in. Then there's Make Your Life Epic, one of the state's largest marketing uh, companies, makeyourlifeepic.com. And I can go on, ooh, Make Your Life Epic. See, site <laughs> can't be reached. This is the kind of thing you define, you act, you measure, refine, you, then you pull up your email and you send Andrew an urgent email and you fix it. That's what you do. Let me get this here. Okay. So again, we know what we're doing. Let me put call Andrew and fix the website. Okay. But the reason why I'm uh, we're qualified to teach you all these things is because we actually do it. And if you go to thrivetimeshow.com, we've done it. We've achieved success. The reason why I wrote a book called A Millionaire's Guide to Becoming Su Sustainably Rich is because I wanted to teach you from a millionaire's perspective how to build a multi-million dollar company. So if you go to thrivetimeshow.com and you click on testimonials, we have over 2,000 client success stories recorded on video of people sharing how they've grown their businesses dramatically. It's going to be a blasty blast. So on today's show, at the end of the today's show, if you want to download the book, go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire. If you want to buy a ticket to the Reawaken America tour, go to thrivetimeshow.com. If you want to join us on the Reawaken America tour, you can go to time to freeamericacom If you want to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation to learn how to grow your business and take it to the next level, that's what we do. And I charge people $1,700 a month to grow their business, to coach them down the path of success, and you can schedule a 13-point assessment at, at uh, thrivetimeshow.com. Uh, also, if you want to listen to my song called uh, The Ford Escort Song, it's, it's coming up. If you don't want to, you can turn it off. Uh, then we've got, uh, if you want to see behind-the-scenes footage they don't want you to see about how I paid my way through college by organizing dance parties, you can see that. And I just encourage people, take action, because the time will never be just right. And now, without any further ado, we're going to end the show with a boom, because we end every show with a boom. Uh, Sarah, are you psychologically prepared to end the show with a boom? I sure am. Aaron, are you feeling the flow? I'm feeling the flow. Here we go. Feeling the flow. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom. boom. From New Zealand. 252. As I mentioned, born in Montreal. Five hours and 38 minutes. Very well Until game time, baby. Oh, yeah. Kevin. All right. Episode one is about to begin. We got Adam Bagwell over here. What are you eating, buddy? You can't, you can't start the episode one without some KFC chicken. It's all you can't, baby. All right. We got to set up. I'm about to be out. Yeah, hey, I'm about to leave right now. I'm about to bring all the people up in this club. Man, this is about to be a happy night. You know, this is going to be a new dance club when everyone finds out what's going on here. There's a couple thousand people up in this mug. You know, they got a lot of dance floor, a lot of room. So all I'm about to say
yo, I'm rockin' with my kids, you know I'm number one, bout to kick it with my fools in episode one, yo, we got the kid with the correction of facility, yo, I'm breaking it off, hey, yo, I'm rockin' with the you can't flow, but when I get up in the mix, hey, yo, I eat you two times, hey, yo, so call me Twix, cause when I get up in the mix, hey, yo, I'm like a Reese's piece of kids, I'm a little baby chocolate peanut butter, don't you eat this, oh, cause I be so fly, hey, yo, I bring a tip to your whole mind, if you wanna come, yo, I eat you five, Rocking on the mic, tearing it down till I'm done. So uh, get ready, you, because yo, we coming with episode two, baby. Peace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got the Well, I couldn't find the 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 uh, inappropriate song I wrote in uh, in, in college uh, called the Ford Escort song. So I'm gonna uh, play for you a song that it, it is appropriate that I did just recently record for my wife, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. And then we'll tell you more about the, up, the upcoming business conferences that we're hosting right here at the Thrive Time Show. You can get those tickets at thrivetimeshow.com to come and see us at the in-person two-day interactive business workshop where you can learn how to take your life and your business to the next level. We build millionaires. That's what I do. May 6, 2021. We got married at 20, yo. Look around, still had that old video. Play it back from 21 years ago. Zoom in with the pins, see your eyes glow. Back then I knew where you would go, where I go. Love and tears like an old school revival. A Mazda MPV is how we roll. Had a second by the Hondo Mo Solo. Promise to be here for worse or for better. These diamonds really mean that we'll stand the pressure. It's not always easy, but nonetheless. I'm sticking with you till that do is part. Till that do is part. Till that do is part. Till that do us. Till that do us. Till that do us. Okay, 42 now, be 43 later. Uh. Half dead now, got no time for the bait and hand. Another candy, I want you now and later. Yeah. To another level, getting on the elevator like, hey. We're getting off at the penthouse and make way for the college dropout. How we get here, the Lord only knows. I'm not that great, and every day it shows. But I am stuck to you like glue, and you is stuck to me too. Cause I'm like gum on your shoe. True, I'm the house under your roof, and I'm 100% approve. And I love you all to proof, and of course, better be on time. Not true, and promise to be here. We're so better.
liked that, Sparkfire Nation, JLD here, and welcome to Entrepreneurs on Fire, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network with great shows like the Salesman Podcast. Today, we'll be breaking down how Clay Clark grew shawhomes.com from $16 million to $160 million and how to 10x your business, not tomorrow, but now. To drop these value bombs, I have brought Clay Clark and Aaron Antis into EO Fire Studios. Clay is a co-founder of Five Kids, the former former Oklahoma U.S. SBA Entrepreneur of the Year, the founder of several multi-million dollar companies, an Amazon bestselling author, and the host of the Thrive Time Show, Business School Without the BS Podcast. And today, Fire Nation will talk with Clay and Aaron about a merit-based pay system. We'll talk about turnkey marketing systems that produce quality leads, your irresistible offer, how to grow exponentially, and so much more. And a big thank you for sponsoring today's episode goes to Clay and our sponsors. The Gold Digger Podcast, hosted by Jenna Kucher, is brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. Tune in and discover your dream career with productivity tips, business hacks, and so much more. Jenna's recent episode on four questions to qualify your digital product idea is a must listen. Listen to Gold Digger wherever you get your podcasts. Aaron, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something that you believe about becoming successful that most people disagree with. Mm, what's going on, Fire Nation? Um, something that uh, I would say is sort of controversial in being successful is the level to which you must uh, have oversight of your team. Like, for example, I, you know, home building company, we've got all these model homes all over uh, the state of Oklahoma, and I can't be there in all those remote locations, so I have video cameras there. I was told that it was uh, immoral, unethical, and just the wrong thing to to do to be watching people while they're working for us. And so that became a thing for a short period of time. And then I found out the people who were calling it immoral, unethical, and just not the right thing to do were doing things in my model homes that were immoral, unethical, mm. and just not the right thing to do, and therefore didn't want to be seen. So I found that uh, honesty loves accountability. And so, um, you know, those people who were following our process and doing the things they were supposed to be doing, they didn't have a problem with it. Honesty loves accountability and is definitely not scared of accountability. I love that. And again, Fire Nation, we're talking about how Clay Clark and Aaron, of course, grew shawhomes.com from $16 million to $160 million. And we're talking about how to 10x your business, Fire Nation, not tomorrow but now. And Aaron, you installed a merit-based pay system to hire and inspire high-quality team members. Talk to us about this process. Yeah, well, I think that most people, um, you know, they they want to get paid what they're worth instead of getting paid what the job is worth. And when you install a system like that, you get a different character level. You get a different quality level of employee. Um, when you pay somebody what the job is worth, then, you know, I find that most people show up to work every day to try and find something to do other than their job and uh, as little as possible without getting getting fired. And people who show up in a merit-based pay system are the kind of people that are looking to grow as a person and they're looking to grow with the company that they're a part of. So um, it's been very successful for us and it's really made a huge impact in the the character and the quality of people that we've hired on. And Fire Nation, it really does come back to talking about accountability. I mean, people that are doing the right things they love being held accountable. They love having this merit-based opportunity that's going to reward them for the extra that they do or for the great work that they do. And we don't just have Aaron on the mic, as I mentioned in, in the introduction. We have Mr. Clay Clark standing by as well. And this is an individual that's been on Entrepreneurs on Fire over 12 times now. And you know, Fire Nation, that he is a systems individual because without systems, a business will fail. So Clay, let's dive into your methods to teach others to create turnkey marketing systems that produce what we want most of all, quality leads. 
Well, you know, uh, when Aaron Antis uh, of ShawHomes.com, when, when Aaron, when you, when you first reached out to us, uh, mm-hmm. you'd already built Shaw Homes to a point where the company was doing $16 million of revenue. I believe that's an yeah. accurate number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what I'm looking for when people go to ThriveTimeShow.com um, forward slash EO Fire, and again, for anybody out there listening, if you go to ThriveTimeShow.com forward slash EO Fire, if you schedule a free 13-point assessment for me, I'm looking, first off, are you coachable? And I'll, and I'll just give you a, a quote here from uh, the, the E-Myth author, Michael Gerber, who happens to be a friend of Love mine. Him. I've met him. Uh, he says, the difference between great people and everyone else is that great people create their lives while everyone else is created by their lives, passively waiting to see where life takes them next. The difference between the two is living fully and just existing. So I'm looking for people that clearly know where they want to go. So Aaron was very clear. He says, I've got shawhomes.com, a business that I run. I want to grow it to this particular size. And what I, I need some help doing that. And so we, we, what we sat down with Aaron to do was to identify who who his ideal and likely buyers are. So shawhomes.com, they sell what I would consider to be semi-custom homes in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So their, their ideal and likely buyer is somebody, primarily a female, who is looking to uh, buy a home and who wants to uh, a custom design a home to a certain point. They want to live in a neighborhood, but they want to custom design it. So you start to think about, okay, who is your ideal and likely buyer? So step one, who is your ideal and likely buyer? Step two, you determine what is the best way to reach your ideal and likely buyers? You know, where do your ideal and likely buyers go? And so for Aaron Antis' business, we discovered that his ideal and likely buyers typically go to Google, one. Two, they go on social media, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera. And three, they drive by the potential parts of town they want to live in because Aaron has uh, model homes that are already erected. There are homes that are being constructed, homes, their neighborhoods they just began. And so what we had to do was install three systems. One I call signs and wonders. We had to make sure that the signs were big, uh, orange, Everybody who was driving by had to take notice of these signs and wonder, wow, I wonder what shawhomes.com is. <laughs> Two, we had to make sure that anybody who was going online looking for Tulsa new homes or new homes Tulsa or new homes in Tulsa, buy a new home in Tulsa, anybody typing in any term related to buying a new house in Tulsa could find shawhomes.com. And the third thing we had to do is I had to make sure that the people going on social media would find Shaw Homes for the right reasons. And so Aaron and I worked diligently together. What I did is after that assessment, I laid out a specific plan of what we needed to do. And Aaron said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, anything you ask me to do, I will do it. And I remember he said that, and I thought, whatever. You know why I thought that, JLD? Because I've worked with so many people over the years, and usually people might knock out 90% of it or 80% of it or 95% of it. But Aaron diligently knocked out each thing we do we, we did. So with our, with our program, we have a weekly coaching meeting. In each meeting, we assign what needs to be a what needs to be done. We identify what needs to be done. We discuss what needs to be done, and then we solve. So identify, discuss, solve. So in that meeting, we leave with action steps. So he has homework to do, and my team has homework to do because in our coaching program, we have these workshops every two months that we do. But we also have weekly work that we're doing that's all included in this coaching package. And I have to get the photography, videography, web development, online ads, workflows. I have to get all that done. My team has to get that done before I see Aaron next week, and I have to do that for all 160 clients I have, and he has to get his work done before we see each other next week. So it really requires him to put in work and my team to put in work. And I'm telling you, shawhomes.com has now grown from $16 million of revenue to Aaron. What was the actual, the the, the high number that you're at there for? Uh, it was like 162. $162 million, JLD. And that's not as a result of drifting around. That's a result of diligently implementing action steps each and every week over the past four to five years here. And one thing that I know you did, because we've talked about this before, and it's one of the things I love most about you, Clay, that you make sure happens, and that frankly, 99% of people who do not follow the right process do not have is an irresistible offer. Because an irresistible offer for first-time customers, it is critical. So Clay, talk about how we need to develop this, maybe how you did this with Aaron. Then I want to hear from Aaron as well about why this was such a game changer. Well, I'm going to throw the listeners out there three examples of uh, an irresistible offer. So one, for anybody out there listening to this show right now, if you go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash EO fire, you're going to see that we have, uh, you've lowered your standards and we've convinced you to leave 
leave Puerto <laughs> Rico and to travel all the way to Oklahoma to join us for the February in-person Thrive Time Show workshop. Now, this workshop, I tell people, if you come to the workshop, it's $250. It's going to be great. You're also going to get a copy of, of John Lee Dumas. So you're going to get a copy of your new book there. Uh, they're going to meet you. They're going to meet uh, myself. They're going to meet uh, many, many hundreds of successful entrepreneurs. It's a two-day interactive workshop. It's 15 hours of training. But what I do to make it irresistible is I tell people there's a money-back guarantee. And people go, seriously? I've never been to a conference where there's a money-back guarantee. And then I say, we also let we, we, we let people, this will blow someone's mind, we let people name their price if they're in a financially tight situation because I grew up poor. Uh, Aaron, you know what it's like to not have money. Oh, yeah. And when you are in a spot where you need a hand up, you don't need a hand out, but you know maybe you're down to your last 50 bucks and you want to get out to a workshop and you're going – you know, getting there alone to Tulsa, Oklahoma to attend that workshop is going to cost me some money. So if I get my money back, if I don't like it and I can name my price, why would I not do it? So that's the no brainers we always do for the conferences. People love it. Again, you can learn more at thrivetimeshow.com. The second is for Shaw Homes. If you go to Shaw Homes right now, the no brainer offer they have, and Eric can walk you through the mechanics, is they have got this deal where you can save up to $40,000 on a new home. Now, you can't do that unless you're the size of Shaw Homes and they have different uh, financial and mortgage partners they work with, lending partners that have allowed them to make that arrangement. But when someone looks at that, they go, wow, I can save up to 40 grand. How's that possible? Then when you see that they are the highest rated and most reviewed company in Oklahoma, you can read the Google reviews and somebody might say, they probably faked those reviews. You can actually click on the testimonials, <laughs> the video testimonials uh -huh. and you're like, are those a bunch of holograms or are those real people? You can see not just 10, not 20, not 100, but hundreds of video testimonials at shawhomes.com. So again, it's it's a no-brainer. And then there's like level one, level two. It's just so hot. You can't say no. And the third, off, the third uh, example I'll give you, for anybody out there, they might have listened to a previous interview you and I did, but Tip Top Canine is a brand that I've coached with and worked with for years. And they are one of the top dog training companies in America. And there's a celebrity. I can't remember. I cannot mention his name. I want to, I just talked to him last night. He's a celebrity. Aaron, you know, him. we're going to talk to him later today. Mm -hmm. He reached out to tip top canine just to see if the no brainer actually was valid. And the, the, the no brainer works like this. It's $1 for your first lesson. Yeah. So here's one of the wealthiest people in our area. He goes to tiptopcanine.com and he has one of these massive guard dogs. And he's like, well, I'm going to schedule a $1 <laughs> lesson and I'm going to see if it's good. And he called me last night. I was getting Christmas gifts for my kids. And he calls me and goes, dude, that two hour training for a dollar was the best dog training I've ever seen in my life. That is a hot deal. And again, it's a $1 for your first training, but then you also have video testimonials. You have Google reviews. You've got to make the deal so hot. It almost burns the retina of your ideal and likely buyer. It has to be so hot. People have to put on sunblock just to visit your website. Hey. Well, I mean, Fire Nation, if you're not a little fired up right now, check your post. Aaron, what do you want to add to this? Well, yeah, I would say uh, when I first started with Clay, I wasn't, I, I was not cued into this. And Clay, you know, as he said earlier, you know, I was the person who said, I already know everything I know. I want to know what you know. So I said, I'm open. You tell me what you think I need to do and I'm going to do it. And this was one of the first things was creating a, you know, an offer that was irresistible for our, our ideal and likely buyer. Mm. And what happened was we went from the number of leads we were currently getting online and through the phone, our leads went up 1,200% within a matter of 30 days, 1,200%. And so when we put out our, our incentive, all of a sudden, the ideal and likely buyers that have been browsing turned into buyers. People went from browsing to buying mm. very quickly. And that was a huge thing for us. Our, our exponential takeoff in our interest in our product, we had a great product. We just had to get the people who were out there browsing, you know, you know, they're going to maybe look at 50 websites online, but they're only going to visit 10% of those builders in person. And we just needed to make the cut of being in the top 10%. And once we did that, another thing we did is create a system and a process that's so good when they come in that it's just a laser show of awesomeness when they show up at our model home. Yep. And we turned those browsers into buyers with the combination of those two things. Fire Nation, you heard the phrase a few times, browsers into buyers. And the sad 
thing is so many of you don't even know how many browsers you have because they come, they look, they leave, they do nothing. And you're just like, why am I not getting any leads? Well, because you don't have an irresistible offer. So they're glancing at what you have, what you're offering, and then they're gone forever. But man, when you can turn those browsers into real buyers, everything changes. And we have a lot of exciting things to talk about when we get back from thanking our sponsors. When's the last time you referred to the tech and software you use for your business as too easy? Eeks, it's probably been a while, unless you're using HubSpot. HubSpot is a kind of tech that works and that makes it easy for you to do what every business should be able to do, have immediate access to accurate, up-to-date reports and data, have a platform that allows your team to work together towards a common goal and to serve your customers at the highest level. If you're using tech that makes it difficult to access data or one that takes months, even years to learn how to use, then it's time to make a change. HubSpot's multiple hubs and 1,000 plus integrations allow companies to adapt quickly, align their teams, and achieve adoption like never before. HubSpot leads the way when it comes to empowering teams to do their best work by eliminating friction with connected, easy-to-use tools. And HubSpot's centralized platform lets you spend less time managing software and more time serving your customers. Learn how HubSpot can help your business grow better at HubSpot.com. All right, we're back. And we have a few more things to talk about on the business side of things. But first off, Clay did kind of mention something I want to spend a little more time on. And that is a conference that I am going to be a guest at in Tulsa in February. It's going to be fantastic. And Fire Nation, the offer is extended specifically to you, our listeners, Fire Nation. And, you know, I'm going through, Clay, and I love this, you know, the how do we stack up section. And you, you mentioned a couple other good, good conferences, you know. Yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to kind of focus on Tony Robbins for a second, who, by the way, yeah. I've been to Tony Robbins. Robbins conferences, I can vouch that everything here is true. You know, at Thrive Time Show, you get practical step-by-step business training. At Tony Robbins, inspiring motivational speeches. That's fine. Inspiring is good. You get hands-on business conferences at the Thrive Time Show. Tony Robbins, you get a fire walking session. You get business system creation at Thrive Time, at the Thrive Time Show conference. You get motivation focus at Tony Robbins. Um, you get steps to grow your business when you're hanging out with me and Clay Clark at this conference. You get potential Huck Cole entries at Tony Robbins. I mean, it goes on and on like this Fire Nation. It's really funny, but it's actually really true as well. When you attend this conference, you are going to walk away with these value bombs you hear in the episodes times 100 because you get a couple days with us instead of just 20, 25, 30 minutes max with us. So just picture the, the real time in person and learning. Let me tell you, it's crazy. Clay, what do you want to add to this? Well, I'll just say this. I, you know, I, I always went to these business conferences as a young guy. See, I grew up very poor, and uh, I, I defined poor as having no money, and all of the boxes in our cabinets were yellow. Uh, every brand was yellow. And so we would go. Everything was a great value brand. And so my mom and dad, my dad worked at, at Quick Trip gas stations. He delivered pizzas at Domino's. My mom was working hard, hucking advertisements, selling yellow pages, that kind of thing. And I was like 15 years old. And I was thinking, how can I become rich? I'm so tired of being poor. you know. So I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. We've had him on our show, the Thrive Time Show. Uh, I read, you know, Think and Grow Rich. I read all these books, the Service Profit Chain, Harvard, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And what I struggled with was putting it all together. And so I needed to pay people to teach me how to put it together. So I started spending time with Dr. Robert Zellner, the top optometrist in Oklahoma. I began spending time with the NBA Hall of Fame great David Robinson. I began spending time with people, big names people would know, and I would pay these people thousands of dollars for a day of their time. I'm not I'm not exaggerating. I paid Michael Levine, one of the top PR guys in the world, $20,000 for eight hours of his time. This was the PR guy for Nike, Michael Jackson, and Prince, and I knew that if if he could do the PR for my, for Nike, Michael Jackson, and Prince, he could help me learn PR. And so to save up money for those interactions, I had to work at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV, and six months of my savings would pay for two hours with a guru. And so I always thought once I achieved success with my company, DJConnection.com, which I started and sold over 10 years ago, but when I, when I, when I built that business, we were doing four thousand weddings and corporate events a year at djconnection.com. And I remember thinking to myself, if I ever do business workshops, 
If I ever do them, I'm going to make them interactive. I'm going to make it two days. I'm going to pack in 16 hours of training, and I'm going to stop every 30 minutes and ask anybody if they have questions. And I am not going to move on until every question is answered because there are no bad students. There are just bad teachers. I'm not going to leave people feeling full of holes. They're going to leave feeling whole. I'm going to make sure when people leave that event, they are going to absolutely love it, and they're going to laugh. And they're going to learn, and then I'm going. To, I want to bring up actual clients that have had success, and I have nothing. I have no problem with celebrities and people that are well known, but I want to bring up people that have actually gone from the bottom to the top as well. And so we're going to do that. And then you know what? I want to serve them some Cajun food on Friday because yeah. my dad likes Cajun food, and we couldn't ever afford to eat a lot of Cajun food. So we're going to serve Cajun food on Friday. And people that say I don't like Cajun food, that's okay. We have other food on Friday, and then Saturday we're going to serve you. So anyway, it's a, it's a two day event. It's fifteen, almost sixteen hours of training. It's from 7 a.m. to 3. Money back guarantee. You can get that ticket right now at thrivetimeshow.com forward slash EO fire. And if you click on the testimonials button, you can see we have over 2,000 video testimonials of clients I have worked with since 2006 that have had life changing results. You can also see the thousands of Google reviews. And you can also see when you come to my office, this, this event is at my building. So when you come to my dojo of mojo, fo show, when you show up inside <laughs> the, the office here, when you show up inside the lion's den, you're going to be surrounded by success stories. Aaron, you've seen this. I mean, there we're oh, here yeah. right now. There are hundreds of success stories. Hundreds. How would you describe the energy at this thing, Aaron? Oh, I would say it's off the charts. It's like uh, it's like Disneyland for entrepreneurs here. Ooh. And it blows people's mind when they – not just when they walk in the building, but before they walk in the building <laughs> – Everything that's outside, everything that's so intentional that you've done, and I think that people come into this environment, it spurs on creativity for them. But, you know, one of the things that's the most difficult is, you know, ideas are easy. It's implementation that's difficult. And one of the things that's so powerful about the events is that when people show up, you give them ideas, but then you walk them through how to execute it. And that's the thing that creates the power. And for they're them. all in a workbook there. So when you come to the event, you're following. We're all literally on the same page following a workshop. So we're going to start off with marketing and branding. Then we're going to move into building sales systems. And then we're going to move into how to hire people and how to inspire people, how to train people, how to retain people. Then we're going to get into accounting. I know somebody says, I don't want to talk about accounting. It sounds so boring. <laughs> but we have to do the math. We got to do the math. We're going to talk about all oh, that. Yeah. We're going to do accounting. Then we're going to get into how to build scalable workflows, checklists, processes, how to build a handbook, an employee handbook, how to fire people, how to hire people, all of the nitty gritty, nitty gritty details. I call them the messy middle, all that messy middle stuff that a lot of times you kind of glance over and you, when then we pause every half hour for questions and then we throw in JLD coming all the way from Puerto Rico. It's going to be hot. I mean, fire nation. Listen, nothing against Tulsa. I've never been there. I know it's going to be amazing. I'm sure it's amazing. It's not easy to get me out of Puerto Rico. It's not easy to get me out of the Caribbean, especially during the month of February when it's absolutely perfect weather here. But guess what? I'm coming to Tulsa. It's going to be an amazing two days. I'm actually in there for four days because you know I'm going to be there before the event starts and I'll be there through the event ending. I want to see you. I want to hang out with you. Thrivetimeshow.com slash EOFire. Get your ticket. Like Clay said, it's 250 bucks. If you don't feel like there's a value for any reason, it's a money back guarantee for sure. And if you're listening right now and you're struggling financially, just fill out the form. Let Clay's team know. They'll work with you to see if they can make it happen because, again, Clay wants to help you. So we're going to circle back to this at the end, but I want to say if we're not growing, Aaron, we're dying. So let's talk about you developing a scalable business model that allows you to grow your business exponentially. I mean, 16 million to 160 million, that is exponentially. Talk to us. First, you have to nail it, then you can scale it. So we had to nail down the system. I, I had actually sold about $750 million in real estate in my career prior to meeting Clay. So I knew how to sell, but what I didn't know how to do is how to implement that across a wide platform with a lot of different people. 
So what Clay did is he helped me to really pull out all the pieces and parts of what I was doing and put them into a scalable system. So, you know, I'm great on the phone when I'm talking to a client, but maybe somebody else who's brand new doesn't know how to talk on the phone. So we recorded my phone calls. We turned it into a script. I get my new person on the phone and I can coach them through staying on the script. We, you know, on the phone calls, we get the same five objections to setting an appointment over and over again, or in person, we get the same, maybe seven objections to the floor plan over and over again. So we would take what my responses were to those answer, you know, those questions or those objections, and we would turn it into a simple, scalable way to overcome each of those objections. And we ended up being able to scale it out where the people who are working for us knew exactly what to do in every situation they came up against. So I could bring somebody on board who worked, you know, had never worked in our business before and within a very short period of time, get them up and running and took it from having the system that I had nailed down and scaling it across a lot of people. And it really accelerated the success of the people who came on board because with the system being, you know, very much, you know, the people who are motivated by being successful and merit-based pay, they come on board and they love to be able to get success early and often. And those type of people become passionate about Mm. your business. They go from being just an employee to being a disciple of the system because they see it working. And that's how you scale the system. Clay, brother, I want you to take us home. We talked about a lot of awesome stuff today. I mean, we talked about merit-based pay systems. We talked about creating systems. We talked about how to grow and develop a scalable business model, an irresistible offer. Of course, we talked about the amazing opportunity for everybody hearing our voice right now to come to Tulsa in early February to hang out with me, to hang out with you, to get the best conference experience of their life with a complete money-back guarantee. How do you want to end this conversation? Well, I just want to say um, action is the is, 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 is the real measure of intelligence, to quote Napoleon Hill. And I remember sitting in, in my parents' basement thinking, you know, I am not going to be poor anymore. I, I remember having that thought. So I went to my guidance counselor and I tried to figure out, is there any way I can drop out of high school? I know that sounds crazy because my business, my DJ company was kind of starting to grow a little bit. And he was like, I don't advise that, but why don't you graduate high school early and go to college early? So I'm like, okay. So I went to college early. So I'm going to college as a high school student. And then I remember thinking, you know what? I'm going to get not one job or two. I'm going to get three. I'm going to work at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV. And you know what? I'm going to eat one meal a day. I'm literally going to eat one meal a day and have no air conditioning and no heat. And I'm going to save everything I possibly can so I can buy my first DJ system. So I didn't have to rent from a guy named Rob who I met at a bowling alley. True story. So I started uh, saving that money, delaying gratification. Then I thought I could buy a second system and a third. And pretty soon my wife and I, and we got married at the age of 20. I looked up and we're doing on an average at an average weekend 60 wedding or corporate events per week sound lights the vans all that stuff and i started thinking if i can delay gratification for two more years i'll never really have to work again so there i was at the age of 22 and people are going what does your dad do for a living cuz my house was monstrous you know people are going what does your dad do seriously what does he do and so but it was a, that it was a, it was that de- that decision to live intentionally So I would just leave people with this idea. Action is the real measure of intelligence. If you've listened to this show at all uh, or you want to listen to this show backwards, you'll quickly discover frontwards and backwards. (laughs) I'm not that smart. I took algebra three times, but what I am is I'm very organized, I'm very diligent, and I teach proven systems. If you're listening out there right now and you have a soul and a, and a sound mind that works, you have, the, you have the capacity and the tenacity needed to become successful. But you have to believe that right now, at this very moment, that this is your time. You can do it. So you need to go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash EO fire. Find a way to get to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Some people say, I don't know if I can do it. Find a way to do it. Do it as though your future success depends upon it. I've got five great kids who I'm who now are who my kids today 
I'm, I'm sure, very appreciative that I worked at Applebee's, Target, and DirecTV. And there's a lot of employees who work here that are very appreciative of that decision I made. But for me, it was the decision to live below my means and to get three jobs. And for everybody out there, I encourage you to take action today because, because again, action is the real measure of intelligence. Go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash EO Fire. Either schedule a 13-point assessment with me or book a ticket to a, a one of these in-person two-day interactive conferences in February. And you can meet John Lee Dumas. And I promise you, as an added bonus, you don't. Don't have to meet me. If you want to <laughs> avoid me and you just want to meet JLD, we can make that happen. And Fire Nation, you're getting a signed copy of my book because Clay bought a book for every single attendee. You're going to walk up to me. You're going to hand me the book. I'm going to sign it for you. We're going to have a great conversation. We're going to high five. We're going to hang out. We're going to have fun. And nobody has to walk over hot coals, I promise. Aaron, before we let everyone go here today, is there anything you want to add to this conversation? Yeah, I would just say, you know, I remember when I first started working with Clay, I had seen, I knew a lot of successful people in our town, in our state, and I started realizing that somehow they were all connected to him and being coached by him. (laughs) So I remember thinking to myself, I wonder if this could be the right thing for me. And I would just say to that person who's wondering for themselves, should I come to this event or should I not come to this event? I would say you can't go into the past and change the past, but you can make a decision today to have a new future. And I think you should take that leap of faith. Clay's a great coach. He's a great business teacher. And I think this is going to be the moment where that future that you saw when you were hoping hoping and dreaming about what was going to happen. This is where that future gets born. Fire Nation, if the hairs on the back of your neck are standing up from what we talked about here today, please check that pulse. I would love to see you in Tulsa. All you need to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com slash eofire, find out the details. Clay, Aaron, you guys are amazing. Thank you for sharing your truth, knowledge, value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you. We'll catch you on the flip side. Boom. Hey, Fire Nation, a huge thank you to our sponsors and Clay for sponsoring today's episode. And Fire Nation, I just want to say this. I really hope you heard our call to action. I really hope to see you in Tulsa, Oklahoma in early February. I'm going to be there. And again, I'm not leaving the Caribbean just for anything. It's because I'm going to be part of this event. I'm going to be an attendee, a speaker. I'm going to have fun there. You're going to have fun there. 250 bucks, money back guarantee. If you can't fork over the 250 bucks, Clay's team understands. Reach out to them. They'll work something out with you. Thrivetimeshow.com slash EO Fire. I'll catch you there, Fire Nation. Tulsa. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet. You can learn the proven uh, 13-point business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. When we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website, we're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, We're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get-rich-quick, walk-on-hot-coals product. It's literally we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, but I want you to Google uh, the Z66 Auto Auction. I want you to Google Elephant in the Room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? 
When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever, and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you, and we're excited to see you.